to be alive. Welcome to the Seven Cities Forum presents Portsmouth Coffee Talks Morning Show. And my name is James DeMoverton. I'm here with my co-hosts, Leah Drake Stiff and Thomas the Colonel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. How are you doing today? And um, we are, well, I want to start out by saying all three of my favorite teams won over the weekend. Uh, starting off with Dallas, they squeaked one out. Yes. And Virginia Union beat Liberty, Livingstone 42 to something. And we had a battle of the Bay. Uh, maybe the two of y'all can tell me about that. It was Norfolk State against Hampton University. What was the outcome of that, the Colonel? You know, and what side were you sitting on? Well, uh, he was sitting on the right side. I can tell you that. So yes, I was sitting on the side right. But uh, it was a good game, and it, and a lot of people had a good time. <laughs> and and North State's band won. Wasn't yeah. even the band oh, won. Football team hung in there for a little bit, but uh, you know that's all good. It's all good. It's all all in the game. All yeah. in the game. So um, we appreciate that. And this morning, our, our special guest will be uh, members of the St. Paul College for Life. It's alums. Uh, it's a group of uh, alums that are getting together to uh, try, trying to reopen St. Paul. And, and they'll come on and talk to you about that. We're waiting on a few of the other members, but I think, I think uh, one of the members uh, Sonia, Sonia Perdue, Perdue is here. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. And Christopher, Christopher was having a little technical difficulty get pulling his up. I had to resend him the call. Okay. Okay, Michelle okay. is coming on now. You got, yeah, you got Michelle. Okay. Uh huh. Michelle Jones Baysmore. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. And she's sending. She's resending Chris the information and Franchine. So they'll be on in just a minute. Okay. Okay. Well, while we're waiting on them, uh, Sonia, you can you can tell us a little bit about about the group because we're going to get into a lot of things about St. Paul, uh, a little bit about their history, and uh, well, Chris is here. A little okay. Bit about right. history, okay. But, uh, we wanted to start off by if Chris, are you there? He's connecting. Oh, okay. He's connecting to we'll audio. Start. He and Michelle are connecting to audio. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead, Sonia. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, how long the group has been together and, and why they were formed. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, well, Michelle. She may be, she may have on mute, but um, St. Paul's hey. College. Okay, there she is. I'm trying to share with uh, Chris. Chris Keep on. on. Oh, he's, he's um, on. Chris is yes, on. I'm here. I am here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Do you have your camera on, Chris? Because you, you. All right. Let me get in it. Get my camera. And Michelle, on you need your camera on. And Sonia, we need your camera on. Okay. I know. I but, but while you're doing that, let's, uh, Sonia, continue what you were saying because uh, we're on the radio right now. So. Uh, okay. So St. Paul's College uh, was, I, I had planned to attend Virginia State University, but how many of you know, remember William Gibson? Yes. Remember William Gibson? Band director. Well, he, yes, yeah. he was the band director. And so his mother talked to uh, my friend Kim and Michelle Jones' mother and said, you know, you know, please consider St. Paul's College. So. We were, like I said, we were going to Virginia State, but when we went to St. Paul's to, um, to, to check it out, we decided that that's where we would go. And so back in the early 80s, we went on to St. Paul's College and um, I have no regrets. However, um, I, I, I did two and a half years and then I stopped and uh, got married, had children, raised a family and all. And then um, I kept saying I was going back because I wanted a degree from St. Paul's College. And uh, I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And so one day after work, I, I, mean, I took off work early and I rode on to Lawrenceville to enroll in 
in the adult completion accelerated mm-hmm. program. Yes. And it's it's it, I'm telling you it was the best program because um they had I think five different sites. They had one in Farmville, one in Richmond, one in Franklin, and uh an, another one some and and so what you do is you go to you drive to I drove to Franklin once a week to Paul D. Camp because that's where it was a satellite. St. Paul's had an office there. And I mean, uh, you know, St. Paul's came to, to Paul D. Camp and uh, I went there once a week and it was an 18 month program. And so I started in, um, I think, September of 2011 and I graduated in May of 2013 in the last graduating class of St. Paul's College. And then unfortunately, St. Paul's closed its doors. And then um, a couple of years ago, and Chris will be able to tell you the, the, the exact date, he talked to a few other alumni and they decided to form SPC for Life <laughs> and to start working to bring St. Paul's College back. Okay. okay. All right. Looks like we have a uh, Chris. Chris. Chris yeah. there on, uh, good morning. Uh, we have Chris uh, Stevenson on, on camera there, and he's uh, you're the president of this group. Am I correct? I am. How you doing this morning? I am. I'm proud to be. We're doing fine. Uh oh. Well, you're still there. Well, tell us uh, about how you. Uh, ended up going to St. Paul. And, and then later on, we'll get into exactly what you all are doing, your efforts that you all are, your group is doing. Great, to- yeah. It, it was kind of an interesting story, just like Sonia. Now, I'm, I'm from Hampton, Virginia, OK? So I, okay. Um, I'm, a, I'm a proud you know, individual from the Tidewater area. So sports was really big. So back in 1976, uh, you know, Bear Bryant and his team came down there and uh, recruited my brother, Dwight Stevenson. So my brother went to the University of Alabama to play football. So I thought for sure in eight, in 1983, they was going to come back and get his little brother. So I was <laughs> like, hey, this is, you know, that's going to take place. Uh, but that didn't take place. And a guy named Hank Sawyer from Lake Taylor High School now was coaching at St. Paul's and he came down and recruited about, about six of us and we attended St. Paul's. Uh, three of us stayed and we all been best friends. Uh, we're still best friends and St. Paul's has been just a tremendous blessing to me to be able to attend St. Paul's College. So I played there for, played there for four years. Then I graduated with a degree in mathematics. I was fortunate enough to be uh, commissioned in the military as a second lieutenant, just started my career there as a military officer. So I owe the world to St. Paul's College. Oh, wow. That's 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 a great story. And uh, and I'll mention, too, since we always do this about the Divine Nine, you all are a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sure you pledged there on campus. Yep, pledged their death lambda chapter in fall of 1985. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. You, you just hit a nerve, not a nerve, but you uh, hit something with the colonel we have on here when you mentioned that military. Oh, wow. The colonel uh, is also was a colonel in, in the army. So, uh, so you, you hit something, you struck a nerve there with him. But anyway, tell us about, tell us about, uh, now, you, let me mention this. Uh, what I found it was interesting. Uh, uh, St. Paul was was uh, open on September the 24th, 1888. Mm-hmm. September 24th is my birthday. Oh wow! <laughs> and I promise you, uh, I wasn't around then. But uh, but uh, I thought that was funny. So this September, St. Paul would have been 134 years old, wow. and 125 when they. <laughs> so tell us about the efforts, you know, because they almost were saved by. St. Aug, uh, uh, a section of St. Aug was going to come in there and save uh, St. Paul at one time. Uh, I guess that was around right before they closed, you know, uh, and some, some happened the deal didn't go through. So they ended up closing. So yeah. your, how long has your group been in existence and, and what is your uh, purpose? So our group 
<clears throat> so our group started in, in February of 2020, right during the, the height and the start of the pandemic. So actually, uh, myself and a gentleman named Derek Wilson, we spoke and we, we noticed that the campus was still available. So we said, hey, let's, let's go reclaim and pick up the mission and vision of James Solomon Russell, mm -hmm. who was saying mm -hmm. his, his mission was to, to serve the underserved. And we just felt that it was our duty because St. Paul's meant the world to us. So what we did, we just started to communicate with other alumni. We started saying, hey, the property is available. Uh, the Asian company from China, Shenwan Investment Group, said they was interested in selling the property to us. So we like, we need to react, we need to react now. So, but when we, when we start reacting, we, we realized there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of bitterness, there was a lot of mistrust that had developed since the school had closed. And we had to bridge, we had to build a lot of bridges and repair a lot of bridges. But we were thankful for, you know, St. Augustine and all their efforts to, to help keep the college open. But this right here is such a righteous movement, James, that this is bringing the alumni together closer in a different way. So now we, we realize the, the loss of the college and all the, of the educational opportunities that we can provide for others. So we have organized, we got four elected leaders. I'm the president, we have a vice president, treasurer and secretary, uh, Dirk Woodson, and we are uh, Karen Jordan Wright. She's a full bird colonel, retired herself. Uh, Virginia Pez, our secretary is a uh, contractor. So we're broken down to 13 committees and vice chairs and everybody's all volunteer army. We got one higher uh, individual gentleman named Takon Gu, who is a rock star. He does it all from marketing to 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 organizing to secretarial work. He just does it all. But we're now moving from aspiration to operation. Now we're going into action. So we're going to we are we're going to be looking to uh, sign an agreement with Virginia Tech here in about another week and a half to to complete our sustainability plan and business plan. Uh, we did a study with UVA as far as our new market analysis, data analysis. Uh, we did a study with Harvard, um, our stakeholders management plan. And now we're doing a, a completed with Virginia Tech. And this has just been a remarkable piece. Now I would say, <clears throat> I'm a, I, I've been reaching out to HBCUs, but I really, really think it's time for HBCUs if they have the if they have the bandwidth and the resources. This would be a great time for us to really reconnect back with our HBCU sister schools, especially in Augustine. And we've been talking to the bishop, Susan Haynes of the Sun Diocese. Uh, the relationship with the Episcopal Church is stronger than ever. So we're in, we're in great position. We are in great position. And, and we're just thankful for you to give us the opportunity to tell our story here. So everything's growing in a, in a, in a beautiful manner. First, to host it in there, uh, first I'd like to say bandwidth. That must be a military term because uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Must have been something that, that was birthed in the military because uh, he uses that. I want to ask you this before they get in. Um, they've been closed. St. Paul has been closed for about nine years. So what is, and you mentioned about the, the company from China that, that bought into it. Uh, do they know, own the entire, entire college? And what's been going on there since, since the nine years, in the nine years they've been closed? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, they do not own the entire campus. They own the main campus, which is about 138 campuses where 31 buildings were on. Um, and they have not, they have not done anything. They haven't invested not one cent into it. The property has been deteriorating by the day. That's why the sense of urgency for us to purchase it back is now uh, the, the county purchased a, a portion of the camp of the campus which was our student center 
and now they use that as the Brunswick Conference Center. We're, you know, we we've been in communication with the county, and and I think that we're going to continue to work together with with the county and see how we can put this together. And also, the Brunswick County IDA um, owns the the St. Paul's College Farm, which is a four acre, four hundred acre farm that we're looking to purchase back. So there, it, it's broken down in like four segments. Um, actually, Delegate Tyler. Uh, family owns the single parent uh, housing and child development center that St. Paul's uh, was the first in the country to develop a single parent program and Delegate Tyler and her family purchased that to, to just keep that legacy going. So we appreciate that. Uh, we've been in communications with them in reference to trying to put all these pieces of the puzzle back together. Uh, but we're going to start with the with the main campus, and that's owned by Shenwan Investment Group. But they have not they, they they haven't they haven't done anything with the property, and it is our and the alumni we feel it's our responsibility, no one else's our responsibility to to reclaim that property. And one more thing before they get in there, you notice that the, all the three hosts are, are sporting uh, our, our, our HBCUs. Uh, yes, in, support, in support of St. Paul, we got the Virginia Union, Norfolk State, two Norfolk States, and Colonel is a Norfolk State and Hampton grad. So, <laughs> so we decided to wear our gear in order to show our support to St. Paul. All right, co-host. Okay, yeah. uh, uh, you hit you hit you hit on an area that I was going to ask you about, and that was the Chinese group uh, who had purchased the property. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to know about the, the status of the buildings because my husband is from Lawrenceville and uh, I, we wow. ride that way and uh, I, I've seen the buildings and I was just wondering what's, you know, how and what status were they <laughs> now because you can't see the deterioration that's taking place. So you all are ready to purchase it, refurbish it and, and get it up and going uh, once again. Yes, ma'am. Now, now we had our engineer and our architect go through each and every one of those buildings, okay? So we, we put them in three buckets. The, the first bucket, what was gonna be the cost to rehab the, the property or the buildings to put it in operation. The second bucket was, if we weren't gonna use it right away, what it's gonna cost us to, to mothball it, to mm -hmm. pack it, use it for later. Mm -hmm. And third bucket was, was it going to be able to be recovered mm -hmm. and, and what was going to be the cost to demolish it? So we're going through this process and we're in the process of doing our appraisal on the property as we speak. So when we, when we, we've been in communications with Shenwan. And so when we give them our offer, they know it's a justifiable offer. Okay. And we want our, 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 our alumni, our supporters, to understand more of the process that we're going through. That's, that's the big thing here. The piece here is that we, we have to gain the, the respect and the trust of back our alumni. And so to do that, we got our guiding principles are transparency, humility, and staying unified. I, so, you, I love it. I, I <laughs> love it to see that you all have come together with the mindset to reclaim this HBCU because we cannot afford to lose any of our HBCUs. And it's just great to see the energy that you have. I must say that Tanya Nicole from the Richmond area, who's also a St. Paul's alum, she's on now. She was excited about what you're doing. And maybe through the coffee talk, you all will be able to engage more alum to get involved and to join you all to reclaim that which is yours. And, and one last thing I see Colonel is trying to get in here. Also, my <laughs> mother-in-law taught at St. Paul's College. She taught wow, English. Wow. Ms. Rachel Stith taught English at oh, St. Absolutely. Paul's College. So um, I'm excited about what you're doing. And uh, I, I just pray that all goes well for you and that you're able to get it up and running again because uh, <laughs> we, we can't, lose our schools because it's very been very beneficial for us in our community and it's still beneficial for us in our community to have our HBCUs. So I want to commend each of you and Colonel, go ahead. 
Yeah, let me uh, put the disclaimer out there first because the views stated on this program are, not, uh, are the host and the guests and not of the radio station or anybody else. So we can put that off there so we don't get uh, put in Facebook jail for uh, talking about things that other people uh, might not be comfortable with, as we know in what's going across in America. But one of the uh, things you talk about the bandwidth and, and other HBCU <laughs> Uh, uh, banding together. Yet, uh, I go back to if you're looking at the HBUs across the country, the policies in a lot of the uh, states uh, her, has been to choke them off financially, and then so that's why you might not get the uh, the, the you get a, a, a thumbs up from them, but they don't have the financial backing that the two schools like uh, Virginia Tech and UVA have because they have an endowment that they can make those kind of investments without even blinking an eye. Because it's going to take uh, tens of millions of dollars to get you up and running again. I mean, really, literally tens of millions of dollars. And uh, so we, you also have to, I know you've thought about it, is to attack this, this problem of, uh, or this project on the legislative end, because one, uh, you've got to get the funding from the state. And unfortunately, uh, you have a, uh, a state government that has been is under control of the Confederates now that is anti people of color. And so that is your long stick in the pole to put this tent up because they're an antithetical of helping black folks now. And when I say the Confederates from the governor on down to those people up there in the in in the uh, in the house in the in the representatives that is owned by the Confederates too. So you have to work on the legislative end to do this. And so what do you just to make it long story short, what do you do on the legislative end to make this thing work? Well sir, appreciate you for your service. Uh, you know, both serving that you understand that we got to be, we got to stand on our own two feet. And yeah. that's, that's the first part that we're really stressing that is first, we need to take the first step to, mm -hmm. to reclaim the property, you know, as the alumni from a legislative standpoint, we are, we've been, we've been working with Congressman Bobby Scott with the department of education to ensure that we, we create something that is a tremendous value for the 21st century of an educational program. So we understand money follows value. Mm -hmm. So the, the piece that we're working on that we're so excited about is the, are the academies. We're looking at a builder's academy. We're looking at an automotive academy, um, mass media academy. And because we're looking to heal the village Okay, mm -hmm. we're because it takes a village to raise a child, so we're we're going to ensure that the village has all the resources and have all the educational opportunity for the village to be raised up. Because one of the things that we took a real deep dive in is say what what is the need of an HBCU at this particular time, and it, what I know when we came along. A lot of it was a, a escape from the black communities. You know, it, 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 we didn't, and I'm not saying that in, I'm not saying that to take any type of, but we weren't recycling our resources back into the black communities. So they were always traumatized. They were, so the thing is, no one wants to go back to an area that's traumatized. So what we're looking at is creating a community educational center that's going to help at this particular time raise the level of the community, the black community, which is a part of the American community. Now, we've been working with Senator Warner's office, with Cynthia Downs. She's been tremendous. Uh, yes, and we feel that once we don't care, you know, if you're supporting black or white, you, if you know that this is a value for the entire community, which the black community is a part of the American community, that you would support it. So we're keeping everyone in, informed, involved in understanding 
once the results are in come and the data supports it, it's going to be, it, it's, it's no question. I mean, it, it's going to be something that everyone's going to be supporting. But the number one thing is the alumni. <laughs> I can't overstress that is the alumni. We have to pull together. We have to purchase this property and we're doing it. We just purchased. Now, you can't make this up, sir. All right. We mm -hmm. just purchased a building in downtown Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville has one traffic light. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a former Bank of America building that sits between the town council. Yeah. In, in the county. We purchased that building. Uh -huh. With cash, oh, with crazy. cash, we have we paid cash for the building three hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash we raised with the alumni, with family and friends. We're That's we're right. we're we're moving forward. We're uh, you know this is something that is righteous right now. We're doing it right <laughs> now. So That's yeah, we we need those legislators and their CI action and our movement and they and they the the money will follow the value. Absolutely. Right. Well, what is the purpose of the purchase? What are you going to do with that building? Oh, wow. Okay, great, great question. <laughs> yeah, that's our St. Paul's for Life headquarters that is now transitioning to the St. Paul's Leadership Institute. Uh, so the top floor, we have two, is a 12,000 square foot building. The top floor is going to be a business center. Uh, we're going to be partnering with uh, People's Advantage uh, Credit Union. Uh, we're looking to put a, a business center with FedEx in there, uh, co-working space. So if you came and you were working in Lawrenceville and you needed a Zoom call, you would go in there and be able to have office space to just come in there and have conference call meetings, the whole nine yards. That's something that the community desperately needs. Desperately. In a desperately. desperately. That's right. Yeah. That's, wow. that's, let me, uh, let me, uh, first I want to shout out to Tanya and Nicole, who's yep, uh, watching on Facebook. And uh, I can understand when you're on campus, the time goes by so fast, because she gave us two, two different class dates when she graduated, 91 and 95. I'm assuming 95 is the <laughs> actual year she came out. So I understand that. And, and I'd like to uh, direct my question to Michelle Bazemore. And one thing I'd like to say, I, I see on your shirt, this is from one cat to another. You know, you're a tiger and we are panthers. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to uh, ask you about your experience at St. Paul and, and also your experience working with the uh, St. Paul's for Life group. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to be up here. And thank, thank you all for being up here. I, um, hold on, let me get into a room where light, a light is. Okay. Hey, Michelle. Michelle, yes. before we start, uh, Slim's going to tell the... Uh, People out there in electron lands that we're getting ready to transition. Okay. We got minutes okay. Here. Yeah, thanks, Colonel. Appreciate that. And uh, we, we want to thank all the uh, listeners, at WGPL 1350 AM, for watching this first half hour. And for the Facebook listeners, we will continue uh, for another half hour on, on Facebook Live. But thank you to the radio listeners and uh, join us next Monday morning as we will have. A representatives from the Rucker Realty, uh, a black owned and operated realty company here in the city of Portland. Thank you. All right, uh, Michelle, you can continue. Okay, I came to St. Paul's. I followed my sister to St. Paul's. I was supposed to be going to the University of Virginia, but I decided that I wanted to go to a HBCU. I had a full scholarship to St. Paul's College. I, um, like I said, my sister was already there. We roommated together and uh, our room was the room to be at. We, um, I, I, had, I had a similar story to Chris because I graduated from St. Paul's with a degree in mathematics also. And um, it, I love St. Paul's because it gave me the history I needed for the black culture that I was missing because my high school was, um, it was, uh, it was like even with black and whites. I went, so when I got to St. Paul's, I mean, I said, I really loved it. It talked about um, sickle cell anemia, which was um, a lot in my family. My parents didn't know a lot about it. I went to St. Paul's, they did a whole series on sickle cell anemia and I came home and taught them about it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it was just an outstanding experience. I um, pledged Delta Sigma Theta sorority at St. Paul's College under Delta Omicron chapter in fall of 85. That's why I say Chris and I have similar stories. And um, I, I, I went on to become a physical science text for the federal government. And then I became a health physicist for the federal government. And now I am a nuclear engineer and technician for the federal government. And I owe it all to St. Paul's <laughs> College. I also uh, continued my education and got my master's degree in mathematics, secondary education mathematics from Norfolk State University. All right now, behold the yeah, minute so, go. I mean, I'm just an HBCU lover. I love the HBCUs. I encourage it. I taught at TCC mathematics uh, for about 11 years. And when COVID hit, um, they kept taking my classes. So I ended up stopped teaching there. And right just recently, I did apply at Norfolk State University because I do love giving back to the community. I know how challenging math can be for African-Americans and a lot of people in general, but my heart goes out to the African-Americans and I'm gonna help them uh, do what they need to do to get what they have to get to make it in society. Yeah, it's and good, that's good. good thing you had the math majors there. You, you, you knew the importance of ownership by paying cash for that building. <laughs> <laughs> those math majors help you understand numbers and how important numbers are yes like that and before Leah comes on I'd like to say the colonel and I are cousins and we had an uncle uncle Bill uh, attended St. Paul's College and played baseball way back uh, back in the uh, day back in the day I, I don't know the year uh, Tommy I mean colonel do you know no, I don't know the year yeah yeah so we, we got family ties there yeah yeah <laughs> All right, Leah, go ahead. Okay, if you have individuals who are listening or who will come on later, because this will be on YouTube uh, once this show is over. So it'll be out there forever. You can go to Portsmouth Coffee Talk, find it on YouTube, share it with your family and friends. But if you have individuals out there who may want to become a part of your organization, how can they, if they haven't heard yet about the great things that you're doing, how can they come and become a part of the organization? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a general body meeting every month on the third Thursday. Uh, you can go to our website at SPC for Life. That's S S P C, the number four, then life.org. Or you can call me direct at 757 755 4073. And you always can come to our headquarters. Downtown Lawrenceville at 300 North Main Street, That's Lawrenceville, right. Virginia. So, yes, so, the, so the headquarters is opened and manned at this time? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And from what hours is it open? From Tuesday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Great. Typ typically those times run over because I'm still there to about 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Oh, so you, you're there manning it, Chris. I am. Um, I travel. I, I live in Yorktown and I still have a home here in Brunswick. So, okay. um, so I, I stay here typically during the week. And also if we have programs up down the weekend, my wife is also at St. Paul Light, who is from Brunswick County, but she is now she's a uh, assistant principal in Newport News. So we go back and forth. Okay, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. And I think it's important, Chris, to um, tell them about the Unity Day, how successful that was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unity Day was on, uh, what was that, August 27th. I mean, mm -hmm. we had right around 200 people there um, at our headquarters. We did a Unity Walk from, the, from our headquarters to the, to the campus, and we rung the bell. We rung okay. the bell at the, at the campus, which sits on top of the hill on the campus and, and, and far as our commitment, the call to duty. And we've been ringing the bell every day we've been here since Unity Day until we reclaim our sacred land for St. Paul's College. Yes, That's right. That's right. So uh, Chris, got a question yes, for you. 
So the Chinese, as we know, uh, buys up property across this country. I mean, they just throw money out there. And then so yes, probably bought uh, the college pennies on a dollar. So if you contacted them and saying, okay, this is uh, what is their offer to unload this property? One. And then two is the, uh, is there a possibility for the uh, county of Lawrenceville to come in there and uh, make up something and seize this property under this domain? For like, and they do that across the country to black, you know, yeah. I want to go through whatever and yeah, get this property. Yes, sir. They they paid 2.5 million for the for the property from the guaranteed pension fund. So okay. they and um so they you know are, are asking for 3.1 to 3.3 million. Uh we know that could be a stretch. We understand that. And uh, so that's why we're looking at a justifiable offer. Yeah, the, the county um, could, you know, practice intimate domain and far as, you know, far as unutilized property and neglected property. But that's going to open up a can of worms in the county where they have it's so many properties in that area that they're going to have to really be in position to, to address all those issues. Um, so, but but that is something that we have spoken about. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, sir, Colonel, sir. Yeah. This, this, we, we feel that the college, you know, and we, we feel that's our responsibility, right? And we, and I, I, I do understand. I, I, we do not want to be in a position where the, where the tail is wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, right. We want strong financial position when we come back we want to do this thing differently uh we want to be very humble when we come back and we do we want to use all the the policies and governance in place to to secure it but we we, we, we want to look at it a little different we want to look at it we want to look and not saying that's not a right way to do it but understand that we're we're all about production yeah. We're all about producing. We're all about when when we purchase this property back. Oh man, it, it's gonna it's gonna be strong. It's gonna be powerful. We're gonna be sending a message. I, I, I got you. I got you. But you know, I was coming at it and saying uh, just the threat of it. That two point yeah. five that they bought it from, just the threat of them coming, of the county coming in and saying, "I'm gonna uh, seize this property at uh, one million just a threat they'll come to the bargaining table because you know when it come down to money i am ruthless that's what you have to be <laughs> yes sir yes sir absolutely and that, now we got I'm saying you gotta yeah, be absolute chips but chris absolutely. um go ahead go ahead chris no ma'am no ma'am okay now it did um the college has been designated the the buildings have been designated as a as a historical site has it been not all the buildings no ma'am what building has been designated <laughs> as a historical site our chapel our chapel the saint paul's memorial chapel and the saul building the first building that james solomon Ru russell uh, did his educational class in. those are the only two right now a designated historical. We are in the process of trying to get the whole campus designated right. as historical right. land. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and that would give you a little leverage as well once it's designated as a historical site. So, absolutely. Um, and, and by the way, my husband went to James Solomon Russell High School. <laughs> <laughs> what's your and what's your husband's name? If you if you don't mind me asking, Delacy Delacy Steph. Oh, okay. All right. From the, hey. the, the stiffs from the Lawrenceville area, you know, Brian Stiff and and that whole family there. So Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. Brian is one of my best friends. Absolutely. Well, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all so y'all so gonna work on having it designated as a historic the whole campus as a historical site. And that's yeah, in that's, place it's in the workings now or is it in the future? 
Absolutely. No, ma'am, that's been working right now. We're working with the county and the Brunswick IDA and uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia, uh, uh, Res I, this name escapes me right now. The company that's actually doing the process, it, it'll come to me in a second, but okay. we are, that's in process right now. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go back to, to Sonia. Um, your story, the story you told in the beginning about you going there two years and then coming back years later to finish up, uh, encouraging story. Uh, and and for, for the people, you know, and this will also help for, you know, getting the support. It's probably a lot of other people that, that took that route uh, for various reasons. And I just want to ask, what about the uh, Hampton Roads area? Uh, is it an uh, actual alumni association here or is, is they, are they separate or, or part of what you all are doing? Because I'm Hampton Roads is full of HBCU, uh, CIAA or formal CIAA school uh, alums. So what about the people here? You know, you get enough people here involved, uh, just sending in whatever they can could uh, add up to something. Absolutely. And we do have the Tidewater chapter of the uh, St. Paul's Alumni Association or SBC for Life. And we meet uh, normally the second Sunday of each month. And it varies where, because it's, um, it's the Tidewater area. So we, we go some month, it might, we may go from Portsmouth to Chesapeake or Hampton. You know, we, we travel around the seven cities, but yes, we do have the Alumni Association um, that uh, we meet every uh, every month. Mm -hmm. yeah, Second Sunday. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. The second Sunday, and our pres the president of that uh, chapter is Adrian Shirley, and um, she is on Facebook. Um, or or we have a page, though the SBC for Life page, and and. Most of the time, every, all of our information is on there because our locations and time varies. Mm -hmm. I but it's that a question. strong group. It's a strong group. We had over twenty people at our last meeting, and um, we, you know, we 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 we, we meet uh, monthly. And <coughs> I, yeah. I, asked that, I asked that question because we've had several uh, alum alumni associations on the show, uh, Virginia State. Uh, Virginia Union, Norfolk State, and we had someone from uh, Elizabeth City. And all mm -hmm. of the presidents are interested in at least once or twice a year coming together uh, to either fellowship or, or, you know, just to talk about the needs of, of the HBCUs in the area. So I will try to, you know, make, make contact. I'm going to send this tape okay. to all those uh, alumni associations so they can see that. And, and that's uh, something we would be interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or maybe before that, uh, we can get all the presidents together and, and they can meet and, and see what can come out of that. Because you put all those those alumni associations together in Hampton Roads, that's a powerful piece of people. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It <laughs> is. Supporting each other because all of us uh, are raising money for certain things. We just uh, did a, a local endowment, you know, in the name of uh, our alumni association here. In, okay. in Hampton, so, uh, and we are concerned about other HBCUs in the area as well. So I'm glad to have you on here so we can make that connection between all the HBCU alums. Absolutely, yes. Would be Absolutely. A powerful yeah. You know what, uh, I think uh, it's another follow-on question for, I guess, Chris, uh, but the rest of you. But you talked about the, uh, uh, getting the, some of the buildings uh, designated as historical uh, landmarks, which is great. And the other thing with that is, uh, is telling the Chinese they can't use these builds, they can't tear them down, and cannot uh, repurpose them to some of the <laughs> exactly, which, which will cut down on the value. In and when you start negotiating this, so that's a, and to make sure that they know that. That, that, that the value of that property is going down. The other thing is with the county, are they, uh, with the real estate uh, folks, are they valuing the property and charging them this expanded rate, especially at the highest rate now, 
because of the inflation and everything that you, they're getting their money from the Chinese. And so making them cost more on that end, which might bring them to the table uh, a little faster than normal. And then with the third thing is going back to eminent domain that we're going to seize this uh, <laughs> property and stuff like that. So it, it, that's just thoughts off my hand from somebody that's uh, thinking that how to how to get this piece of property on the cheap. Yes, sir. No, those are three good points. And the, and the county is working with us in that respect. Uh, the county administrator has been very supportive and the, and, the, and the chair of the Board of Supervisors, which is a St. Paulite as well. So, um, you know, those, of course, those are slow cooks, but understanding moving forward with those, with those prongs mean a lot because then the, the Asian company from China understands that, hey, you know, sooner or later, they're going to have to, you know, move forward with the property. They just can't keep sitting on it because they, they purchased it in 2017. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's been a long time and, uh, and they have not had any action in that, in that, in that moving forward with the property. Well, did, they ever it, did they ever indicate what they were going to use the property for? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. They, right. they, they just buy no. stuff. Yeah. They just buy assets in the country. Yeah. They have so much money. The Chinese have so much money. Right. They just buy it. And it was buy it was bought on the cheap. Yeah. So the you know, we understand that the purchase of 138 acres with 31 buildings for 2.5 million is, you know, that is that is way below market rate. But mm -hmm. like you said, that that was the value of it back then. Mm -hmm. And it, and this it has decreased since then because no, no, no money or no investment has been put into the property. Yeah. So you know when I talk to the Chinese, I am trying to help you unload this distressed property because if you don't put any more money back into it, then the city, the uh, county has to come in and seize it because it's an eyesore and it's dangerous for it to be out there. You, you know, I shouldn't be at the table because, you know, it'd be threatening for them and they might just give you the property. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, you're, you're more than welcome. We, that's one of the things we are very inclusive. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Uh, but I think you'll be, uh, I think you'll be impressed with our negotiation and acquisition committee team. Uh, you know, but we would love to have you there. Hey, mm -hmm. the, the, the more people that we have at the table, that has the passion to 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 reclaim the property is is you know nothing but a benefit nothing but a but so nothing that, to have you there you you have a fund that says i this is the acquisition uh fund like you have a housing fund or whatever yes yeah, sir so you have that there's raise money to do that and so are you getting closer you know you're at the 50 percent you set a goal of what you're going to uh buy it for and so is there a percentage of where you've gotten where you need? Well, that's, it's, it's not a, we do not have that in, in the bank at this particular time. Because what we're, we're doing is we're looking at finalizing our business plan. Because once we, we, have <laughs> the, we have the verbal commitments and people waiting in the wings, we wanted to make sure that we were crystal clear in our messaging to our donors so they know exactly what their money is going to be used for. So the, the piece that we're putting together and, and concentrating on the, the more the institutional advancement plan. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Okay, see like my, my signal went out. The institutional advancement plan is to ensure they know that we're looking to reclaim the sacred property. Now, if for some reason the negotiations don't go well, we want the, the, our donors to know, and with transparency, that we're going to continue with the educational platform for the 21st century. So that's, that's the piece of the messaging and the plan that we want to make crystal clear before we launch this uh, capital campaign for the uh, reclaiming of the property. Now, uh, Chris, for those individuals who may be 
graduates of other HBCUs and they may want to uh, support you in your effort, how can they get in touch with you? How can they support you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, once again, you can go to our website. That's the best place is www.spc, the number four, life, spcforlife.org. Or they can call me at 757-755-4073. Or you can go to uh, email. It's spcforlife at gmail. At gmail. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're, we are on all over the social media, Facebook, Instagram. So you can DM us. You can contact us through Messenger. We're, we're, we're very responsive. And... Yeah, we would love for all the HBCU alums, supporters, and St. Paul Lights to please reach out to us. We, we would love to have you. Love to have you. Yeah, I'd like to ask uh, uh, two questions, really. Uh, has there been any communication with the CIAA, you know, as far as the, the sports? Because, you know, the CIAA uh, have, have had to go out and find other schools to fill in, fill the gap for schools that have left. And, and I think it would be important for to have a school come back and just wonder if there'd been any communication with CIAA, if they did anything like that as far as supporting schools trying to come back as a school. And another thing, uh, you've been a private school, uh, like a union private school, and you don't get as much state funds as maybe uh, Norfolk State <laughs> or the state colleges. Is there any possibility uh, when you come back to be a part of that state system or would you have to come back as a private institution again? The, the answer to the first question in, in reference to the CIAA, uh, we had a, a great uh, conversation with the commissioner uh, during the CIAA tournament. We were fortunate that one of our own, Greg Jackson, um, was inducted into the CIAA, who was a St. Paulite, played there and then he, uh, he coached at North Carolina Central and Delaware State. So yes, um, they are very interested in our plight and supporting us with the the, the reimagining of St. Paul's College. Um, in the 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 at this particular time with the with the state, now we're 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 looking to come back uh, as a institute, St. Paul's Leadership Institute. Now, when the time comes. And when we're in position to be a full accredited uh, institution, that's the conversation, you know, uh, down the road. Uh, that's the conversation we have spoke about it in reference to the state or, you know, or staying private. Um, but at this particular time, we're, we're interested in coming and we, we're coming back as a St. Paul's Leadership Institute. Okay, and, and we're kind of winding down now, but I'd like to mention, and you might know some more, I'd like to mention a few notable uh, alums from there. Billy Eckstein, you know, uh, if, uh -huh. if you don't know him, uh, great jam <laughs> poser. <laughs> Missing this lady, Helen uh, D. Edmond, she was, uh, she's a graduate of St. Paul, but she was the first African-American woman to earn a doctorate degree from Ohio State University. Yes. And also, this guy uh, was used to be a menace to my Cowboys, Daryl Green, who <laughs> played, uh, with the Washington Redskins for years. So you had some notables come out of there. I'm sure you know some others to come out of there. Even like I always said, if you were good enough in sports, they will find you, no matter how small of, of a, a institution you, you attended. You know, we had quite a few come out of the Union in Norfolk State and Hampton as well. So I uh, just wanted to mention those few notables. And if you know some others, just uh, feel free to mention them. Absolutely. Of course, the three of y'all uh, included in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in including Miss Tanya Nicole in Richmond. Tanya's a family yeah. member. So yeah. Tanya Nicole, <laughs> she's really been an SPC for life for quite some time. So. Absolutely. She's been out there pushing her love for St. Paul College, and um, we just wish the best for each of you. We, we, we want you to be successful, um, because once again, we cannot afford to lose any of our HBCUs because we offer valuable service 
uh, to our community. So I appreciate yeah, everything that you're doing. Tanya loved it so well, she graduated twice. And twice, yeah, years. she couldn't get that year right, <laughs> could she? <laughs> Yeah, I told that, Chris. I told Chris that you know we've always been competitive in the CIAA, so that doesn't stop. You know because y'all still we're still coming after you for certain things, but it's all in hey, fun. It's, it's all in HBCU power. And, and, hey, hey, James, I have this. I have this type of competitiveness in me every weekend. I, my brother-in-law is a graduate of Virginia Union, and I have three sisters that graduated from Virginia Union, so. Yeah, I know, you're talking about Darry, I know him. Yeah, yeah, so. Reverend. Yep, we, we, we have these conversations every weekend, absolutely. So, uh, but now we'd like to thank you guys for this type of platform, raising the awareness of these issues in our communities. Um, this is, people like you, People like you guys, you know, just keep keep the flame going. And we just want to really, really thank you guys for all that you've done and that you're doing. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And uh, we give every everybody a chance to make a final statement. And we, we, we'd like to have you back and, and come, and come back continuously and let us know the progress because uh, we'd be very interested. And hopefully we can get a lot of other people involved, especially here in the Hampton Roads area, you know, yeah. that... Uh, and and don't shy away from the parents, you know, that sent their kids there because uh, <laughs> that was a quite a big investment. By being a private school, they might have got some funds, but a lot of parents had to foot that bill. So it's like they have a lot invested in, yeah. in St. Paul. So you go after the parents of those those children that uh, attended St. Paul. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, to the three of you, once again, I want to say thank you so very much. I'm thanking you for taking on such a, a great effort in order to reclaim uh, that which is yours. And, uh, you know, uh, I have a group called Sankofa, and uh, that bird reminds us that we must go back and get the best of what we had in the past, bring it to the present so that we can move forth to the future. So it looks like you all are doing all of those things that are necessary to get you all back to where you used to be and that you can once again be SPC for life forever. So uh, congratulations to each of you. And uh, we do look forward to hearing about your progress. And I guess that should I roll through Lawrenceville again, I'm gonna have to stop by that office to see exactly what it is you all are doing there uh, in the Lawrenceville area. And, uh, and, and all that you're doing is so much needed in that area. So um, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I commend you for all that you're doing and to all of those individuals who have joined you um, to help you in this effort, as well as those who are looking forward to joining you in the future and helping you in this effort. So um, good luck to each of you. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, you uh, being successful in this endeavor. Thank you. And, and I echo what uh, Leah says, and this is a just cause. And I, I stay that, say that because, uh, one, we're in these are some unprecedented times. For decades, uh, the other side has been against HBCU schools or anything connected to people of color. And it was, and it's been highlighted over and over again by the policies that were against us to wreck us financially and also to take anything away from us that makes, has, uh, gives us a chance to succeed. And so uh, you need to continue this fight and, 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 and just to consider, hey, this is basically a war and to go at it that way. Yes, take, sir. Don't take prisoners. Yes, sir. Michelle, you have any last um, I just wanted to say that um, we are so thankful for you all allowing us to do this. And that um, SPC for Life is not just for uh, St. Paul like uh, support. We would like anybody and everybody to support us if you would like to. It's, we're opening it up to everybody. Again, we love our HBCU. We love St. Paul's College. And we are ready to give back. I am looking forward to teaching mathematics at St. Paul's College. All right. <laughs> Very good. And, Sonia, 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 Sonia
<laughs> yes, I would just like to say as well, thank you so much for allowing us this platform. I would also like to say that we are having a St. Paul's College slash SBCU for Life reunion that will take place in Lawrenceville, October 21st through the 23rd. Okay. So we will not let St. Paul's College die. We will not let it die. So, and so the, the reunion that you're having in Lawrenceville, where are you hosting that? It's um, with the, the host hotel is in South Hill, Virginia. But okay. the actual reunion is going to be held in Lawrenceville. And which, build, which building is that, Chris? Friday, the meet and greet is going to be at the St. Paul's for Life headquarters. And then Saturday, uh, Saturday, the is going to be at the Brunswick Conference Center, which was our student center. Okay. So it's be right there in Lawrenceville. And so they will have a chance to go on campus and kind of move about while they're there. We 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 are going to ring the bell. While okay. We All right. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, you, well, you know, uh, Norfolk State has that uh, "Behold the Green and Gold." And Virginia Union has for real the maroon and steel. So unless you have something already, when you come back, you have to have something for that black and go that black and orange. Black and orange, yes, sir. If you don't have it now, we come back. Tight, orange, tight. And, orange, orange and black. And black. We coming back. That's oh, okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming back. The green hills are still the loveliest of all. I'm telling you. Amen. And yes, I saw is. this. I saw this as well. Your motto: "Challenge by choice." Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, okay, that's a good motto. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And we appreciate you coming on. And thanks everybody watching on on Facebook Live. And thank my co-hosts. And we appreciate you. And, and like I said, we're going to have you back, and we're going to push it, and hopefully uh, get St. Back St. Paul back on, and and so we can uh, you and you can come down there and do what we normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that A. And, and, and James, it looks like Eric, Eric Perriman is saying that his son, John McCoy, also uh, attended uh, St. Paul's College. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, I know he also uh -huh. called the orange and black. We are coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Black, thank we you. are back. Now we're coming back. Yes. Oh, we're back. We are back. back. We have to yes, go back. I like it. Back as though they are. That's right. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Go ahead and claim it now. Claim it now. That's right. Claim it. Claim it. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. That's right. Well, thanks so again. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For our voice. Our community. In our future. Oh, we got it Thank right. <laughs> it's a new thing, Paul. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.